So I've been getting kind of frustrated lately, and it's not just because Virgin Orbit and Spaceport Cornwall seem to be unable or unwilling to set a launch date, although that has been pretty frustrating, I must admit. I am back here in a uh, hotel uh, to the north of London, got to go back into London to get more medication, etc., to extend my stay out through the 15th, and that's as long as I can stay. But but that being the case, <laughs> that's not the main thing that I'm frustrated about. Instead, I'm kind of frustrated with NASA. And there's a hell of a lot to be frustrated about in spite of the fact that Artemis seems to be going well, Orion's uh, returning from the moon, all of that is looking really positive, but we don't seem to have a consistent message from NASA in regards to what they really intend to do, what going back to the moon to stay actually means. I mean, we've got images like this and like this this, things that depict enormous lunar cities. And they just made another announcement recently that they've contracted with a company called Icon to build enormous lunar habitats. They put over $50 million down with these guys. Now, that doesn't seem to be a solution that fits in with two people staying on the moon for 30 days or four people staying on the moon for 60 days. It seems to be far far more ambitious. But in spite of how cool all of this stuff looks, NASA doesn't seem to have any serious plans to put more than four people on the surface of the moon any time before 2035. It could be even later than that. So why the hell is NASA contracting for these huge habitats when they don't intend to use them? Well, because I think we really need to just find out what these habitats are all about. They are amazingly cool, and if NASA is spending all this money on it, surely they must have some sort of long-term plans to actually build something like this. So let's check it out right now. So if there's one thing I can say about Icon, they don't do things halfway. They start out this ad with an immortal quote from Gene Cernan. As we leave the moon, we leave as we came, and God willing, we shall return with peace and hope for all mankind. Obviously, Gene Cernan always wanted what NASA is trying to do right now, to return to the moon to stay and to establish a permanent human presence there. There. It is tragic that the poor man died before he got to see any of his dreams realized, but at least he got to experience the wonder of setting foot on another world. That being said, though, Icon seems to be taking this legacy by the horns and trying to complete what Gene Cernan started. According to a press release that hit the news wires a couple of days ago, quote, NASA has awarded ICON, located in Austin, a contract to develop construction technologies that could help build infrastructures such as landing pads, habitats, and roads on the lunar surface. In order to explore other worlds, we need innovative new technologies adapted to those environments and our exploration needs, said Nikki Werkheiser, Director of Technology Maturation in NASA. NASA's Space Technology Mission Directorate. Pushing this development forward with our commercial partners will create the capabilities we need for future missions. But look at these massive habitats that ICON has in mind. And like so many other contractors who are working on extra 
extraterrestrial habitats, they plan to use 3D printing. They were, in fact, the first company to build a 3D printed house, and you're looking at it right here. It is nothing short of amazing. So if they can build something like that here on Earth, it stands to reason that they could also use ISRU to build these kinds of structures on other worlds as well. Now, what you're about to watch right now is the construction of what's called the CHAPIA, I guess, the Crew Health and Performance Exploration Analog and Mars Dune Alpha Habitat, by the way. It's called all of those things, but this is a 3D printed Mars surface habitat analog. It's 1,700 square feet. It has four private crew quarters, dedicated workstations, a dedicated medical station, common lounge areas, and a galley and food growing stations. And it's not just for show. Three different NASA crews will be selected to live in Mars Dune Alpha for one year missions. Each crew will include four individuals and two alternates. The analog missions will provide valuable insights and information to assess NASA's space food system as well as physical and behavioral health and performance outcomes for future space missions. So clearly NASA is planning to have four people on the Martian surface for a long period of time. But at the same time, the Artemis plan suggests that only two astronauts will go to the surface of Mars for a couple of months, living inside a Martian rover and not inside a huge habitat like this. An ICON is partnered with another company called BIG, which stands for Bjarke Ingels Group, I think I pronounced that correctly, and they don't do things small either. I mean, there's Lunar Starship in the middle of one of their 3D printed launch pads. Oh yeah, we'll get to that in a moment. They want to build launch pads and landing pads as well as habitats, but in any event, let's get an idea of what they have in mind. Quote, building on our experience with Big's Mars Science City, by the way, that's in Dubai, and it's absolutely colossal, we are working to develop the first permanent structure on the moon resilient to the hostile lunar environment, where the cost of payload transportation requires rigorous efficiency. We have explored various building forms ideal for containing atmospheric pressure and optimized for protection from cosmic and solar radiation. The habitat will be designed with the inherent redundancy required for extraterrestrial buildings while also using groundbreaking robotic construction that uses only in situ resources with zero waste left behind. And by the way, that's a quote from Martin Fulka at the Bjarke Ingels Group. And in addition to that, Icon has their own quotes. Jason Ballard, who's the co-founder and CEO, said the following, quote, to change the space exploration paradigm from here and back again to there to stay, we're going to need robust, resilient, and broadly capable systems that can use the local resources of the moon and other planetary bodies. We're pleased that our research and engineering to date has demonstrated that such systems are indeed possible, and we look forward to now making that possible ability a reality. The final deliverable of this contract will be humanity's first construction on another world, and that's going to be a pretty special achievement. And by the way, this is the Mars Ice House. I really like this design for a Martian habitat using ice for the outer skin, which provides fantastic protection from radiation. And also this design includes sort of a front yard, an enclosed area that actually is pressurized and gives the illusion of being able to walk out your front door and go outside for the day. It's a really great idea and something I think that would work very well well for sustaining astronauts over a considerable period of time. But throughout this entire press release, ICON is making it very clear that they're intending to build something big and something permanent. Quote, NASA has signaled that through the Artemis program, the moon will be the first off-Earth site for sustainable surface exploration. Building a sustainable presence on the moon requires more than rockets. For a sustained lunar presence, robust infrastructure will need to be 
built on the moon that provide better thermal, radiation, and micrometeorite protection. ICON's development plans are following a live-off-the-land approach by prioritizing the use of in-situ native materials found on the moon. From landing pads to habitats, these collective efforts are driven by the need to make humanity a spacefaring civilization. Please subscribe! So what's Project Olympus gonna look like? Well, there was nothing in the press release, so I did a little digging. There was nothing on the website either, so I searched Project Olympus floor plans. Nothing. Damn it. Then I searched Project Olympus diagrams and I found a habitat design called the Lunar Lantern, which was put together by an engineer and architect by the name of Melanie Asher, and this thing is amazing. We'll start off with the ground floor. It features private programmatic areas, individual crew quarters for four astronauts, so yeah, this is designed for four people, although it's modular, so you can build a lot of them, as you can see from this illustration. It also has a lounge area, bathroom, a convertible health lab and medical station, and the hatch on this floor connects to the pressurized rover and also functions as an emergency exit. Then on the second floor, you have a dedicated area for communications and mission control activities, a restroom, a rack area for environmental control and life support system, and an exercise area. So the second floor is a mainly public floor that has two airlocks to connect to other modules such as a lab or logistics logistics module, and then the third and top floor of the habitat features a galley and communal recreation area, kitchen, storage, as well as an aeroponic garden that cascades to the second level of the habitat, adding a great deal of greenery to the interior of this habitat so astronauts don't forget what home looks like. The top floor is also adaptable in that it can shift from being a public gathering space to a more private space observation and contemplation area. A window is located on every floor of the habitat and positioned to ensure constant visibility to Earth. Lots and lots of amazing features to this habitat designed not for a short stay, but rather going to the moon to stay, which is exactly what NASA should be pushing for right now. This is a remarkable habitat design, and it's only the beginning of what they have in mind for Project Olympus. You also need to keep in mind that this is a double hulled habitat, that is to say it has two one meter thick 3D printed regolith walls to provide maximum protection from the outside environment and also to contain the necessary pressure differences between the inside and outside, obviously, and also to provide a tremendous amount of protection from cosmic rays and solar radiation. This is an amazing design that provides all the comforts of home a quarter of a million miles away. I really like the design, and as you can see, Starship appears in all of their recent illustrations. It's obvious to Icon that Starship is going to represent the future of mankind's efforts to colonize the solar system, and they want their structures to work in concert with Starship's infrastructure. And honestly, I think this is one of the best possible solutions that NASA could ask for if they are indeed serious about going to the moon to stay. And if you're a super nerd like me, you want to see all the details, so this is how these one meter thick walls are built. Instead of just being a simple one meter thick lunar concrete wall, you instead have layer upon layer of protection to add structural strength and protection. You have, of course, the lunar concrete made out of regolith. On top of that, you also have tension cables, Whipple Shield panels, and a Whipple Shield lattice to add further structural strength and a fabric liner. This is a hell of a wall designed to protect the astronauts from the extremes of temperature, the extreme pressure differential, and the extreme radiation. And I'll tell you, I think that this is more than enough to keep astronauts safe on a sustained lunar mission of six months or even longer. But here's another fantastic aspect of Project Olympus, which I've kind 
kind of mentioned before. They're also going to build landing pads for Starship, which is going to be unbelievably important to Starship's long-term success, not only on the moon, but even on Mars. If ICON can demonstrate their capability of using in-situ resources to build very large landing pads suitable for Starship to set down on, and I think that's going to be very important. A vehicle as tall and as unstable and as heavy as Starship landing on Lunar Regolith, and we have no idea exactly how well Regolith is going to hold up under that kind of weight. We really need a landing pad instead, and Icon is already, as you can see, working on making that a reality, and in the near future, they're going to be using Apollo Regolith samples in order to more accurately simulate lunar regolith for their construction purposes. This is a comprehensive plan to create not just a small lunar habitat for a couple of months, but a lunar city. But aren't these grandiose plans in sharp contrast to what NASA has in mind for Artemis? I mean, four astronauts on the lunar surface for 60 days at most, and then two astronauts on Mars for a couple of months while driving around in a rover? Well, in my opinion, there's a division of philosophy at NASA. There are those who want to go the conservative route in order to get the job done as inexpensively as possible, and then there's a visionary side of NASA that really wants to make us into a multi-planetary civilization as aggressively and as optimistically as Elon Musk does. And given the fact that they've just put down almost $60 million on this kind of vision, well, that may be what we have in store for the future. Please subscribe, guys. We are almost at 90,400 subscribers right now. We are inching our way towards that 100,000 subscriber finish line. And don't forget, I am going to be blowing up New Schleppard the moment I hit that 100,000 mark. Please check the description for various ways to support my channel and to keep this content coming. And as always... Stay angry about space!